Welcome to Technical Insights, today featuring MVS ESA. MVS ESA is a functionally rich and diverse operating system, and I've asked several of my colleagues to join me today for this broadcast. Dick Succo, Jim Perel, and Paul DiMarzio. Last year, we announced subsystem storage protection, and according to our customers, it was one of the most exciting things IBM has announced for the user community. Dick, can you explain what subsystem storage protection is? Well, Jamie, we've had a lot of customers that are coming through Poughkeepsie, and many of them are asking for 7 by 24 hour operation. They're looking for continuous availability. And in the hardware, in the base control program, and in our subsystems, we've been looking for ways to try to improve that. Subsystem storage protection is one of those items. It's a combination of hardware and software that's intended to provide storage protection in a CICS uh, environment. Studies that were made by Hursley, our CICS development laboratory of 100 customers, indicated that storage violations occurred in many of our shops, bringing them down 10 to 20 times per year. And each of those outages ranged from anywhere from five minutes to uh, an hour. And so this uh, particular feature will help prevent from 25 to 50 percent of those particular outages that occurred in CICS. Is it difficult for the customer to implement subsystem storage protect? No, because it's a feature on the hardware that's supported by MVS ESA 422 and changes that were made in CICS 33, which means no changes to the application. We mask it from the application itself. I'd like to add some to Dick's comments. As customers move to 7 by 24, it's equally important that the code that we ship doesn't fail them. Um, to that effect, the lab has been investing quite a bit of money in setting up the processes and procedures that will get us on a path towards defect-free code. In addition to defect-free code, Paul, what other things are we doing in MVS to improve quality? Well, the customers have told us loud and clear that quality goes far beyond just defect-free code. So we're focusing on several other areas that uh, our customers have told us are equally important. One of them is uh, service responsiveness. Um, to that end, we've incorporated the full responsibility for service delivery into the lab. Now services provided by the same people who are doing new development. We're also focusing on customer assembly, um, trying to make sure that when we actually do ship a product, it's easy for the customer to install. Here we do things such as uh, service updates and refreshes of the product to help ensure that the service that we provide gets rolled in and the customer doesn't have to see that. Well, we've talked a fair amount about open systems. I'd like to hear a little bit more, Paul, about APPC. Okay, well, if you're looking for open systems uh, as defined by Jim in terms of portability and interoperability, um, APPC is really a good solution for you. APPC is found on a variety of non-IBM platforms as well as all the major IBM platforms. So our customers can essentially hook together all their diverse pieces of equipment through this protocol. The SAA CPIC, which is one of the ways that you can interface to APPC function, is an open interface. It is licensed by XOpen. It's uh, on a variety, again, of vendor platforms. So the application programmer who codes to the CPIC interface gets true portability of applications, and APPC provides the interoperability that the customer is looking for. Paul, can you tell me how complex it is to build an APPC application? Well, it's not very hard at all, Jamie. Um, APPC has gotten a reputation for being complex, but that's really because of the functional richness of, of the uh, protocol that we have. Um, we have advanced synchronization, security, error recovery, error reporting um, types of functions, but you don't have to use those if you don't need them. A customer could essentially get started up with APPC with very little effort. Um, it's as simple as allocating a conversation to your partner, sending some data, receiving data, and closing the conversation. In uh, 4.3, we've made some enhancements to APPC to position it uh, more in terms of, of being a true enterprise server. Uh, this is an interesting release in that the function that's there was um, the number one requirement of a lot of our vendors. Do we have any applications that currently exist today that are using APPC? Yes, we do. Um, we have a dozen or more vendors that have signed up to create APPC applications. Several of them have, in fact, already shipped. 
We're also starting to see the customer who likes to stay on the leading edge of technology basically recognizing that APPC can provide them a competitive edge. Um, they're starting to utilize APPC for small functions within their enterprises, um, growing their expertise. Uh, Provident Life is a good example of this type of customer. One of the important roles of our department is to provide technical support to the application and development community. They in turn would provide programming solutions to meet the business needs of their departments they serve. In this case, it happened to be the long-term disability area. They had put together an OS2-based application that they planned on rolling out in early January 92. And we were called upon to help address some of the concerns they had related to being able to transport backups of their uh, land server-based databases up to the mainframe. They had some high volume print files that they also needed a file transfer mechanism to get that up to the host where we could print it on high speed equipment. They also had need of a, OS, of a scheduling system to be able to run their production batch cycle. We had a specific set of needs and we chose to use the MBS APPC technology to address those needs up front. I would think that it's important as any company gets into uh, distributed applications, one of the things that's going to uh, quickly become a concern are the data requirements, the data storage requirements. And so it was important to us to be able to have a file transfer mechanism to send the backups of these distributed databases up to the mainframe, get them on migratable storage and off to a, a place where they would incur less charges. As LTD developed their application, it became apparent that they were going to have some fairly high volume print requirements and there weren't any land-based printers that, from a speed standpoint that met their requirements. So we were able again to use our APPC application to transport those files up to the mainframe and take advantage of some of the higher speed printing equipment that we already had. From the experience that we've gained so far with the APPC product, it was relatively easy to learn. There were some rocky spots along the way, but you would expect that with any type of new technology. Um, there was a fairly short learning curve. One of the things that impressed me the most was my counterpart that wrote the uh, OS2 code was able to use the SIPIC uh, verbs to accomplish his end of it in fairly short order and we didn't even have any manuals available. What I really like about Providence story is that they took APPC and they found a way to leverage that into their existing environment. Many of our customers, however, feel that they would prefer to have a, a prepackaged solution um, to their cooperative needs. Um, an example of something that we've done recently in that area is DFDSM. DFDSM storage management function addresses our customers' needs for a, an automated facility that will essentially do um, data backup, restore, archiving from their workstations, LANs, file servers to something robust such as an MVS system. Let's now go and continue our discussion on open. Uh, what is IBM's relationship to the Open Software Foundation? Well, Jamie, we're one of the founding members of the Open Software Foundation. For MVS, we're right now bringing the DCE technology, which stands for the Distributed Computing Environment Technologies, onto the MVS platform. In that, we are initially providing or working to provide an application-enabling environment from which any customer can write applications exploiting the remote procedure call technology. What will happen to APPC when DCE is available on MVS? Both APPC and DCE address cooperative processing, but there really is a difference between the two. DCE has RPC, which is a very simple, easy to understand, easy to get into type of interface. APPC, on the other hand, provides for a more robust interface, as we talked about earlier. We have advanced synchronization, security, um, error recovery types of things built into APPC. So for the advanced programmer looking to have more control, APPC is the way to go. Well, I'd like to thank you all. And it's become apparent to me that MVS ESA version 4 is key to a future of large systems. Thank you all for being with me.